prisoner will rise. You've been convicted by a jury of your peers of the murder of a Ponderosa cowhand, name of Walter Finn Harrell. But she come to town to play a friendly game of stud poker and wound up getting herself killed. It is therefore considered and ordered by this court that you, Isham Troxel, shall suffer the punishment of death by hanging in the week commencing Sunday, September 6th, the year of our Lord, 1868, may God have mercy on your miserable soul. Your Honor, my brother. Let that, that be a lesson to any other scissor bill which they get caught with an ace up their sleeve and try to shoot their way out of it. Your Honor. Courts adjourned. I demand a hearing. Don't worry, guys. She ain't going to get away with this. Judge? Ben? Boys? Judge away. When are you coming out to visit us again? Not soon. Socializing after a hanging case ain't quite seemly for a man in public office, but I thank you kindly. I want a word with you, sir. The case is closed. If my brother dies because of that preposterous sentence of yours, you'll die too. Just as sure as my name is Cato Troxel. You're a bigger fool than I thought you was, Troxel. Make a threat like that in front of all these witnesses? I mean it, sir. Then it'll be Troxel and Troxel on Boot Hill. Instead of in that new law office across the street. If my brother hangs, I'll kill you. And I won't end up on Boot Hill. I'm going to let that last remark go by for two reasons. First, your blood brother just got sentenced to hang, which it would naturally lather you up a mite. Second, because it's 12 o'clock noon, and it's time for me to go home and eat my dinner. Fried chicken, northern style. <laughs> I think there's something wrong with me. I really do. I really do. Look, here I am. I'm a, I'm a young man. I, I got a little money in the bank. I, I don't want to go someplace, see something different. Like where? Like where? I don't know. Back east. Look at all the places I can go. I St. Louis, Kansas City, Cincinnati. Cincinnati? Why would you want to go to Cincinnati? I don't want to go to Cincinnati. That's what I think is the matter with me. I ought to want to go to Cincinnati, but I like it here. Sometimes, Joe, there ain't no way of figuring out mine here. I know what you mean. That's bothering me, too. You're looking for something different. Maybe coming right over there. You was a bossy looking galoot. <laughs> With two sons, one fat and one pretty. Yes, that uh, seems to be a pretty fair description. Uh, this is horse, the fat one. And uh, this is the pretty one, Joe. And uh, who are you? Oh, I'm George. And that there's my Uncle Enos. Enos Blessing, at your service, sir. Well, Mr. Blessing. How do you do, sir? I am here to remind you of your mortality. Someday, a stone like this is going to mark your final resting place. 
Well, there's a happy subject just before supper. Sad, ain't it, mister? But one of these days, them boys are gonna have to buy you a stone just like that one. Now, now don't you believe it, Pa. We'd oh, never no. let you down like We've that. We've got a more expensive one. No, we'll get a great big granite yeah, thing. Pa, we're gonna you. buy you an expensive one. I mean, a great big one. We're gonna put it your name on it. It's gonna say Ben Cartwright of the Ponderosa well, Thank you Park. very much. Boy, is it? It's really very touching your concern for me, but I feel rather hale and hearty at the moment. I don't think I could use one of those just yet. Ah, exactly. What could a cold stone say of this handsome gentleman? Could it speak of his warm smile, of his upright character, of his manly appearance? Certainly not. What he needs is a different kind of memorial. Uh, you know, you're right. You're absolutely right, and he's got one. His fine sons, we will be his memorial. Hey, yeah, that's right, boy. Don't you forget it. Yes, indeed, boys, you certainly will be. But what kind of different memorial were you thinking of? Well, I was thinking, sir, of a photograph. Ah, a photograph. Oh, uh, like a tintype, only it's, uh, that, that's a new process, isn't it? Quite right, sir. A veritable likeness, produced by the chemical action of light, on paper sensitized by the mysterious properties of precious metal, to reproduce his very image. George? George? The samples. Oh. Is George... Uh... George is my niece. Oh. Is, is that where you, you do your work in that contraption? Uh, yes, sir. That is my travel in portable dock room. I have just opened a new studio in Virginia City. Have you? Enos Blessing Portraits in Silver. Uh, the samples, George, if you please. You should do very well there. Uh, thank you, sir. May I show you some of my work? Vice President of the Union Pacific. Hmm. Ship Captain. <laughs> mm -hmm. Sheriff. Very good. Oh, how did this get in here, George? The, the, the horse thief. <laughs> horse thief. <laughs> hey, you know, Paul, they're pretty fancy. You know what we could do? We could frame you and hang you right up over the fireplace. Yeah, well, what you should ought to do is get one taken of each of you, and then you could hang them all up together. <laughs> exactly. A father and his sons. What an inspiring subject. I could do it right here, right in front of the house. Ah, as a matter of fact, I can even throw in a group picture of all your ranch hands. Hey, uh, hey you, you, you know the fellows that like that? Yeah. Oh, right now? I mean, it's supper time. Uh, no, 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 that would be tomorrow, uh, when the light's a little better. Uh, that is, if you could bed me down for the night. I think we'll do it, Paul. I'm all for it. That'd be a bad idea. Certainly, of course, we can put you up in the bunkhouse and we have a spare room for your niece. Uh, no, no, thank you. Uh, uh, George has to go back to town for some supplies. Come here. Yeah, these are nice, aren't they? I want that new hypo. It's back at the studio. We have plenty of... Shh. I want the new hypo. And listen, when you get into town, I want you to find Mr. Cato Troxel and tell him I'll be making the Cartwright pictures at noon tomorrow. Do you understand? No, why do you... Uh, never mind why. Just do it. I'll be back here early tomorrow morning, yes? Yeah? Come on. Oh, yes, sir. Ah. Yeah, now we're all ready. I'm just waiting for Mr. Hoss. Where's Hoss? Can't you hurry up, Hoss? Well, well, we can't hurry this, Mr. Cartwright. This is going to take all morning. All morning? Yeah, well, this is a complicated chemical process. Uh, I have to prepare every one of these plates in the dark room before I can expose them. It took you so long. Well, I figured we were going to get our picture took. I didn't want to look like no saddle ramp, so I've been in there dudin' up. Now, uh, get in post, George. I'm just loosen up now, Mr. Haas. You're stiffer than a hard shell deacon. <laughs> All of you. The whole side better off to have set up with that tombstone, I'll tell you that. Huh? All right, now. Now, look this way, everybody. I want you to watch, Georgie. That's fine. Now, smile. Take a deep 
Deep breath. Now, that's fine. Right, now, hold it. And smile. Now, very dignified, Mr. Cartwright. Ah, that's fine. Now, now, hold it. Now, watch the birdie, Mr. Haas. Beep, 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 beep. That's fine. Hold it. <laughs> right now, smile. Now, that's fine. Now, hold that. <laughs> What's so funny? What's so funny? <laughs> you think it's funny I got my picture taken? <laughs> You're gonna get your picture taken now. No, 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 just a moment. Uh, Mr. Cartwright, you're forgetting. I promised a picture of you and your whole bunch. All the cowboys and all the visitors, everybody. Complimentary, no charge. Oh, that's a good deal for a hurt one. Well, why not? We've wasted the whole morning anyway. Sure. <laughs> all right, now, everybody, line up over there. Get away. Come on, let's get on. Come on now. There we are. Now, all set now? All right now, everybody freeze now. And smile a little. Oh, that's just fine. Made you a promise, sir. I'm here to keep it. I'll make you one. You pull that trigger, you'll hang higher than your brother did. Take a little ride somewhere. I want to talk to Mr. Troxel private. Did you make them? Yeah. The group photograph, too? Yeah. Do you have the plate prepared? Certainly. All right, get out your camera. Not before I see the color of your money. <laughs> Here you are. You can count it later. Well, I guess I'll be arrested as soon as I ride into town. Yeah. There'll be a coroner's hearing in the morning. That's enough. I don't want to hear about it. I don't know how I get in this in the first place. Well, you got into it on account of Georgie, Enos. That was a very unselfish thing for you to do. But all I care about is, will it be ready in the morning? It'll be ready. It better be. It'll be ready. Now, you, you just get in front of the camera. All right. Uh, no, 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 that's too close. You'll have to go back about five, six feet. Right there, that's fine. Now turn around, face me. Ah, we got it. Yeah, we are. Now 
don't move. All right, now, hold still. Ready? I'll get around to it. Sure do like that little Joe. <laughs> He's as handsome as a new steamboat. Didn't you think so? He sure is handsome. I saw you gawking at him. He didn't see me gawking at him, did he? That's not the point. The point is, was he gawking at you? Ah, <laughs> oh, no. Of course not. He thought you was a boy. Just look at yourself. When did you wash your face last? I forget. Exactly. Well, you're all through being a tomboy. You're going to a female academy back east to learn how to be a lady. Oh, that old subject again. How can I go to a female academy? Ten places to cost big money. I got big money. Yeah. Well, go on, go on, open it. Twenty dollar gold pieces. Fifty of them. A thousand dollars. Where'd you get all this? Well, you might say it's my life savings. Oh, Uncle Enos, I don't want to go to no female academy. I want to stay here with you. Well, you can't stay here with me. You're going back to Easter school. To, to Illinois or Missouri. But I don't want to be a lady. That's fine. I'll join a medicine show. Become a saloon girl. I'll marry a gambler. You can marry a Paiute if you want to, but not until you're a lady. I'm going to help you pose your pictures and, and work with you in the dark room and, and poach your eggs the way you like them. I'll poach my own eggs. Then you did not hear the shot, Mrs. Neely? Might have, might not. I was cooking, using pine knots to get a hot fire, and everything was popping and snapping. Well, just one more question, Mrs. Neely. Uh, what time would you say it was when you discovered the body of your husband? Well, I can't say exactly, Doc, but uh, I think I can come to it through my fried chicken. I always give my chicken a good 40 to 45 minutes, put it on about half past 11, because he adjoins his court right at noon. Then it takes him 10 minutes to come home, feed his horse. Then he washes up and sits down at a quarter past. I mean, he used to. <laughs> anyway, uh, my chicken was just about done when I heard him come riding up. And uh, he didn't come in, and he didn't come in, and so I went out to see what was keeping him, and there he was. <laughs> Fried chicken was his favorite. Then you would say that he was shot a few minutes after 12 o'clock noon? Yes, sir. That's all, Mrs. Neely. Thank you. Ben Cartwright, will you take the stand, please? Swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you, God. I do. Be seated. On Tuesday, September 1st, did you overhear a conversation between Judge Neely and Cato Troxell? Yes, sir, I did. Would you like to tell us about it? Happened right over there. I heard Cato Troxell threaten Judge Neely. Said that if his brother was hanged, he'd kill Judge Neely. Thank you. That's all, Ben. Thank you. Just a minute. Acting as my own attorney, I'd like to ask the witness a few questions, if I may. I guess it's your right. Thank you, sir. Mr. Codright, yesterday a man named Enos Blessing came to your ranch and took a group photograph of you, your cowhands, and all your visitors? That's right. At what time was that group photograph taken? About uh, a little after 12 noon, I guess. Well, then, anybody who was at the Ponderosa at the time that group photograph was taken 
couldn't possibly have shot Judge Neely, huh? Well, no. Don't you remember seeing me there at uh, 12 noon or a little after? I certainly did not. Well, you were facing the camera at the time the photograph was taken. All your visitors were lined up behind you. Yes? Well, then I could have been there and you mightn't have seen me. Well, why would you want to come to the Ponderosa? I came to make you an offer on your Lake Tahoe property. Mr. Corner, he didn't make me any offer on any Lake Tahoe property. Well, you were so busy, I thought it better to come back another day. No, sir, he didn't make any... Thank you, sir. That'll be all. Mr. Coroner, may I testify in my own behalf? That'll be all, Mr. Cartwright. You may take the stand now, Mr. Troxell. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, say help you God. I do. Gentlemen, I'd like to make a statement for the record. Yesterday, at a few minutes after 12 noon, I was at the Ponderosa when that group photograph was made. And the photograph will prove it. You were in the photograph? I was. Consequently, I couldn't have been in Judge Neely's stable at the same time. Where is this photograph now? Well, I don't rightly know. I suppose Mr. Blessing has it. You didn't see my photograph. This hearing is adjourned to the photographer's place. The jury, the witnesses, and the prisoner will come along with me. Where's you going to get your pony shod today? Yeah. Well, go on and do it. Does it have to be in that slab-sided east? Ain't there no female academies in this whole big eagle spread and west? No. And go tend to your pony. Right now. Yeah, yes, sir? I'm Dr. Martin, county coroner. We're holding a hearing in the death of Judge Neely. Ah, oh, yes, sir. I heard about that. Would it be all right if I bring my jury in, please? Oh, of course. Thank you. You may come in, gentlemen. Now, did you take some photographs yesterday at the Ponderosa? Uh, yes, sir, I did. I'd like you to produce them for the inspection of the jury, please. Oh, well, now, uh, those are the property of Mr. Cartwright. And I... Oh, Mr. Blessing, I wish you would produce those photographs. Uh, yes, sir. The one you made about noon yesterday, the big group photograph. Uh, yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Ah, here it is. jury? Looks like our verdict is clear. Death at the hands of an unknown party. Well, I guess you won't be needing me any further. No. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Cartwright, for furnishing me with an alibi. Good day, gentlemen. seen that photographer. Hey, Troxell, a perfect alibi. Well, if Troxell's innocent, Joe, I'm glad we did see the photographer. I'd hate to see an innocent man hang. Well, I say he's guilty. Well, Joe, there he is, right there in the picture. Did you show the picture to all the hands? 
Yes, of course I did. Nobody remembers seeing him there. Well, look, what about the men in the back from the Double H? Maybe we went over and talked to them. Maybe they know something. Joe, what good luck going to do? If he's here, he is here. And he's there in the picture. All right, so he was here. Wait a minute. Suppose Judge Neely's wife made a mistake about the time he came home. Look, she testified she was in the kitchen. There was a lot of noise. She couldn't hear anything. Suppose he got home at 11.30 instead of 12.15. He'd had plenty of time to ride Joe, back out of here. Joseph, everybody knows that Judge Neely was a man of habit. He was punctual. At 12 o'clock sharp, he shut his court. At 12.15, he was home having lunch. At 1.30, he opened up court again. People set the clock by him. That's got to be something. All right, he was here. All right, he was here on the Ponderosa when the picture was taken. Suppose he didn't kill the judge. Suppose he hired somebody to kill him. Troxel's got plenty of money. There's plenty of guns for hire in Virginia City. All right, what are you going to do? You're going to go around to everybody who wears a gun and say, did uh, Cato Troxel hire you to kill Judge Neely? Is that what you're going to do? No, I'm going to go talk to Cato Troxel. Oh. Now, what's he going to tell you he didn't tell the coroner's jury? Oh, maybe the coroner went about it the wrong way. I guarantee you I can make him talk. Oh, can you? How, with your fists? Yes, if I have to. Oh, very good. By all means, use your fists. Why don't you try using your head sometime? You might eventually get someplace. Oh, well, go on. Start swinging. Haven't seen a good fight in weeks. You're not going to see one now, either. We're having a family talk. Is that any of your business? Uh, no, not at all. Well, then why don't you stay out of it? Go take a ride or something. Joe. You mean you're not extending the famous Cartwright hospitality? All right. The boys said the picture was here. I'll just uh, have a look at that and leave. <laughs> well, go on with your family discussion. Were the boys um, resisting one of your fatherly lectures, Mr. Cartwright? I'm not the habit of giving fatherly lectures. And if I do, it's possibly because they need it. Might have been a good idea if your father had given you a few. Oh, well, he did. Well, obviously, they didn't have much effect. Oh, yes, he did. I left home. I can understand how Troxel got into the picture, but I can't understand how he got this shadow on the side of his face. What are you talking about? Well, you got a funny kind of sun at the Ponderosa because it casts shadows in two different directions at once. Well, that's kind of impossible, isn't it? I don't want to give any fatherly lectures. But that's a shadow, isn't it? Yes, it is. And do you see shadows in anybody else's face? Funny, isn't it? You think that's funny? You should have seen what happened to me in St. Louis once. The young fellow was uh, doing a couple of tin types of me. He was new in the business. He got mixed up and he put both pictures on the same picture. And I came out looking like twins. What's that got to do with Cato? I didn't say it had anything to do with Cato, but uh, just thought I'd throw it into the general pot of interesting information. Candy? You said this, uh, this fellow made. Two pictures of you on the same picture. Same picture. Call it a double exposure. <sighs> now, if a, if a photographer can, can make two pictures on the one picture, a mistake, why couldn't he do the same thing on purpose? Couldn't Troxel, who got Mr. Blessing to make this Double exposure, We're putting Troxel in this picture without Troxel having been here in the first place. I think somebody better go have a nice talk with Troxel and ask him some questions. No, 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 not yet, not yet. What are we going to do? Well, just let me think for just a minute, will you? Now, if, if this is a photographic trick, and there are two people involved in this murder, Mr. Troxel and the photographer. Now, let's take Mr. Troxel. He's got a legal mind. Huh? He thinks things through very carefully. He'd be prepared for 
Almost any eventuality. Our photographer friend, Mr. Blessing. He's a different kind of man. I think he could be persuaded to help us out. But, Paul, what are we waiting for? <sighs> for me to finish this last year and for you to get the horses ready. Now, let's get. Wait for you soon, Paul. Now, George. Oh, howdy. Can I help you? Well, I was looking for your Uncle Enos. Is he around? Oh, no, sir. He's out on the Carson City cutoff making some pictures. Ah. He sure makes some good picture, doesn't he? <laughs> he sure does. Had to put that one up because everyone was coming in and asking to see it. Yeah. Tell you what, George. George. Huh? George, you tell your Uncle Linus I'd like to have one of these for every single person in it. Oh, I sure will. I'll tell him the minute he comes back. Yeah, you know, the, the hands were all real pleased with the picture because it turned out so good. You know, we had one fellow had a picture taken in St. Louis. It was terrible. Funny, he had two heads and everything. <sighs> That's a double exposure. Must have been a beginner. Uncle Enos doesn't make mistakes like that. We'd better be getting along. Tell your Uncle Enos we were in the scene. We'll see him again. Sure will. Bye. See you, George. is out in the country. I sure want to see him. I always wonder if we go over to the courthouse, finish up that business of ours. Candy, I'd like you to stay here. Keep an eye out. As soon as you see Enos come back. Right, get us. Right. I saw Ben Cartwright come in here. I want to talk to him. Come and gone, Mr. Troxell. Oh, well, whatever he wanted, it didn't take him long. Huh? Oh, no. He, he came and bought a whole bunch of them group pictures. <laughs> oh? Yeah. Oh, they think a lot of Uncle Enos's work. Uh, probably because uh, one of their hands had a picture taken by a beginner, and they got a double exposure. Double ex... <laughs> whatever that is. Well, thank you. Let me go, Roscoe. Ah, how did you know my name? Uh, how did you know my name? Let me Candy, Candy, my old friend, Candy. How you been, Candy? I'm in a hurry, Roscoe. Uh, Candy, I want your unvarnished opinion of me. You're an upstanding citizen, Roscoe. Now I gotta go. Thank you, Candy. There's a little apple knocker in there that says I am a big fat liverwurst. He's drunk. He's belligerent and he wants to fight. You go ahead and fight him. Let me go. Candy. I'm sorry. Why is everybody so unfriendly? Hey. 
Jump Scanny in a big hurry. Well, after you left, Troxel came out and went in the photographer's place. When he came back out, he, uh, he mounted up and rode off south. South? That'd be the Carson City cutoff. That's what Venus is. Well, let's go. I'll get my horse to get you. Let's go. I'll tell you what I'll do. If you whip this little old stinker for me, we'll go get a bottle of booze and a couple of girls, and we'll have a time. <laughs> Sorry, Roscoe. It's going to have to be later. You know, for an upstanding citizen, I'm down more than I'm up lately. <laughs> I came to warn you about the Cartwrights. They're after you about Judge Neely. How do you know? What happened? Well, they went to your studio looking for you. You mean they were looking for you, don't you? You're the one who pulled the trigger, not me. Now, you know there are only two people who know that? You and I. And that puts me in a very unfortunate position. Why? Well, they're going to want you to talk, and you probably will. Oh, now, no. you know I won't talk. I wish I could believe that. Now, but, uh, why would I talk? Because you're a born loser, no. Enos. It's an old adage. Never trust a loser. No. Now you're a dead loser. Cato Trucks will kill Mr. Blessing the same as the judge, and I'll stake my life on it. But, Joe, I can't arrest a man without evidence, and there ain't a shred. You heard the verdict. Death at the hand of a person or persons unknown. Motive, robbery. And Enos had a thousand in gold on him. You're absolutely right. We heard George testify to that. And weren't there any clues at all, Sheriff? None? Listen, I haven't had any sleep in three days. If any of you think you can do better, put on a star. Now, Milo, nobody's criticizing you. Well, I'm doing the best I can, and that's all I can do. Of course, we understand. How did Mr. Blessing's niece hold up at the funeral? Oh, as well as could be expected, I guess, under the circumstances. She certainly did. The fine young girl, and it's about time I went to call on her. Uh, Milo, you get yourself a good sleep now. You're not the first peace officer who's had an unsolved murder in his hands. See you, Milo. Oh, you want us to go with you? No, I'll go by myself. See you back at the ranch. Right. Come on now. You can go. 
ever be a brave young woman. footsteps. That sounds like a very interesting idea. I, didn't didn't uh, Uncle Lena say something about him wanting you to go to a female academy? Oh, I ain't got the money for a female academy. I want to be a female photographer. The first one this side of the Rockies. Well, that's, that's a very laudable ambition. You, you think you could uh, do it? Sure I can. Come on, I'll show you. I'm, I'm making some friends. Here, give me your hand. It's awful dark in here. I've been working with Uncle Linus for about a year. I can pose the pictures. You've seen me do that. And I can work the camera. I've done it lots of times. And I've been helping him in the dark room. And, well, I think I can do it. What's that you're working on? These are the pictures Uncle Enos took that last day. He thought maybe he could sell them to a magazine. So I thought if, if they turn out, well, maybe I can sell them. Sure, why not? Good idea. Maybe I can help you. Oh, would you? Could you write a letter for me? I, I can't write very well. <laughs> of course, I'd be glad to. <sighs> Thanks. Mr. Cartwright, does the sheriff have any idea who done it? Not a one. That's awful. That's just awful. That a man can do something like that and get away with it. Oh, look. They're coming out. Look! Look! Friendly. I came by to see if you might be interested in buying one of my Lake Tahoe properties. I have no further interest in your Lake Tahoe property. What are your interests, Mr. Troxell? Chiefly getting you off my back. You're becoming a nuisance, Cartwright. You're libeling my reputation, besmirching my character, and damaging my legal practice. I want it stopped. If it isn't, I'm going to take you to court. Court? You know. I think that might be the last place I'd want to be if I were under suspicion of murder. Now, if you're referring to the murder of Venus Blessing, there isn't a way in the world you can connect me with that crime. And if you mean Judge Neely, I've been exonerated by photographic evidence. And photographs don't lie. Yes, you're right. Photographs don't lie, I must agree with you. That's why I thought you might be interested in this photograph. Photograph exonerates me of murder. The other one convicts me. Old Marcus would have scorned me. Marcus? Marcus Porcius Cato. The noble Roman I was named for. Cato the censor. The enemy of crime and corruption. Cato. A very model of every Roman virtue. <laughs> <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Just like the judge predicted. Troxel and Troxel. On Boot Hill. You ride only once in a while, you hear? I don't want him to get rusty in the hinges. I'll ride him, Georgie. You? I don't want to come back here and find him sway back. <laughs> <laughs> All aboard, George. Thanks for everything, Mr. Cartwright. You right now. Hey, don't forget. Promise to come see us on your vacation. Well, I hope you all recognize me. I'll be as ladylike as a hog on ice. <laughs> 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 